Hi, I'm Amanda. I teach Facebook ads. I have a program running right now. You should probably buy it. You know what? You should buy this upsell too. You know what? Why don't you just give me all your money right on the spot? Awkward. You don't want to do that. Facebook ads are Facebook ads fill a real need in the industry. They are not as expensive as other ads such as LinkedIn ads or Twitter ads or direct mail marketing or traditional uh, marketing channels. And Facebook ads have a really, really fantastic ability to scale and amplify what's working. They also have the ability to amplify what's not working. So Facebook ads can really point you in the right direction of where the bottlenecks are in your business. And it can do it at a much lower cost than uh, certain other ways of spending your ad dollars and finding out the hard way. Facebook ads are also quite attainable for small and medium sized businesses. They're a great, um, a great entry level point for those who are just starting to get into digital advertising. Um, and it's something that if you're not already in it, you need to be. Your competitors are there. If they're not there, they will be there tomorrow and you don't want to play catch up. You want to be present. And there's there is a whole range of advertising um, abilities within Facebook. So you can go really, really cheap and cheerful and just do reach and engagement ads and really serve the brand awareness side of your funnel, just getting people aware that you exist. And, or you can go right down deep into creating some very advanced funnels and leading people right into sales. So Facebook ads has a really big widespread of abilities to serve your business and serve your budget. So it's so flexible depending on what you want to do with it. Just don't get caught in that, uh, caught in the thinking of I'm going to put money in and I expect an immediate return on investment. Facebook ads can't handle all of your marketing. Facebook ads is just one tool in your entire suite of marketing, but it's a very, very effective and powerful tool for almost all businesses. So that's, that's definitely why I love Facebook ads. So when it comes to Facebook ads, uh, targeting is probably number one, I would say in my books. You can, I always say you can serve the best ad in the world. You can have the best image, the best ad creative, the best title and headline to go along with your ad. You can have the best visual to put in front of people. But if you put it in front of the wrong people, nobody cares and nobody is going to buy. If you have a mediocre ad that's meh, could be a lot better, but your targeting is so dialed in and you're putting it right in front of exactly the right people who are hungry for it, who are ready for that content and who are ready to buy, they're going to buy. So it does become a balance of if you can align all of those things, put the best ad in front of the best targeting, you're going to do quite well, but it's always an experiment to get there. And then when it comes to your budget, uh, your budget has to match your targeting and your budget has to match your audience sizes. Your budget has to match your objective. So if you're trying to sell a $2,000 course as a course creator, uh, but you're only willing to spend $500 on your Facebook ads, it's probably not going to fly. But if you're just trying to use your Facebook ads to increase brand awareness and serve one part of your funnel, um, then there's a lot more flexibility. So your budget really does go hand in hand with the audience sizes that you're targeting and has to go hand in hand with your absolute objective of what are you trying to do? Are you trying to sell uh, a high ticket price item? Are you trying to sell um, you know, really low ticket price widgets? Or are you just trying to build uh, excitement around your brand? So there's varying, varying degrees. So when you go into Facebook's ads manager and you go to create an ad, one of the first things you're presented with are all of these objectives, lots and lots of choices. Do you want to run a lead ad? Do you want to do an engagement ad? Do you want one for a video view ad? Do you want one for a conversion ad? There are tons of different options um, and they align with the, with the life cycle of somebody going through a funnel or the journey. So when we start on one end of the scale, I'm going to give you an example of cold, warm, and hot audience. A cold audience is a brand new first impression. Somebody who's never met you before doesn't know you. Imagine showing up to a party and one of your friends introducing you to somebody who you've never met. You'd want to reach out, shake hands, well, or you know, elbow bump at this point and <laughs> say, hi, I'm Amanda Robinson. I am the digital gal. I teach Facebook ads. It's great to meet you. What do you do? That's an example of a first impression. So when I walk into that room, I'm not walking into that room being introduced to a new person and saying, hi, I'm Amanda, I teach Facebook ads. I have a program running right now. You should probably buy it. You know what, you should buy this upsell too. You know what, why don't you just give me all your money right on the spot? Awkward. 
you don't want to do that. So there are varying degrees of choices or objectives of what, you're, what you want your ads to do. Do you want your ads to make that first impression for you? If yes, then it's a much lower touch point and those ads are typically less costly. They, they're cheap and cheerful, they don't cost as much to run brand awareness, reach, or engagement ads, for example. But as we start to move people through the process and we start to move them into the, into the consideration phase, now you've already met them, there's already a little bit more familiarity, maybe even now I wanna get these people to click onto my website. So that's, that's a much higher ask. I'm asking them to take an action or an activity, a proactive action, not just seeing an ad scroll through the newsfeed and then it's gone. I want them to click or engage. I want them to go to my website. It's a, it's a higher ask, and so there's a higher dollar value associated with that ad type and that objective. And then if I want to get them to go and purchase on my website, if I want to get them to sign up for my email list, if I want them to do any action that's going to put money directly in my pocket through a Facebook ad, it's going to be much more costly. So as you start working your way up those different objectives, uh, the, your ad costs can increase with that but the value of the, uh, the action can also bring returns and money back in. So I would say when it comes to uh, getting familiar with what objectives to choose from, um, start on the lower end of the, the lower touch points, build your engagement audiences first, your cold audiences. Then of the people who are engaging, try and get them into being a warm audience by downloading a freebie, going to your website, taking some kind of action that is showing a higher level of interest. Then serve ads to those people to push them into a purchase or, or get them into the next stage of your business funnel. Um, and just be, be prepared that there are costs behind all of those. So if you're going out trying to build the entire thing, you need to have an entire budget to put behind it. If you don't have an entire budget to work with, then you might not need your Facebook ads to achieve all of that. Perhaps just focus on one objective of growing your engagement on your Facebook page. And I would say stay away from running um, ads just for page likes. Likes are a vanity metric. Likes cost you a lot of money as an ad objective, and they don't really get you that much value in the, in the long run. So focus on those engagement um, tactics to start and then work people through your funnel. All right, so what I say is that uh, I call boosting posts the gateway drug of Facebook ads. The reason I say it that way is um, boosting a post is like having the training wheels put on. It's what gets you started. It's the first opportunity you have to spend some ad dollars and get some results back and do it in a very controlled, safe environment where you're not really going to get hurt. Um, and that's generally when advertisers first start. They first start clicking around on that boost post button and they start to get a few results coming through. And then you're inclined to do it again. So you boost another post, you get some more results coming through. Then you start to see you're getting more and more activity. And over time, you'll get to the point where you're boosting a lot of posts, you're spending a lot of money, and then you realize, wait a second, is this money really being spent in the best way possible? Is there something else out there? Yes, there is. It's Ads Manager. So if you are clinging on to the life raft of boosting posts and too afraid to really move off of that and graduate yourself into Ads Manager, Yes, over time you are going to start wasting your ad dollars in certain ways. It's not operating as efficiently as those ad dollars could be for you. So I really highly encourage you to take the leap, move into Ads Manager, and start learning how to uh, leverage the full power, the full suite of options, all of the optimizations that are available to you. It, if you don't start now, it's going to get harder and harder to learn over time as Facebook keeps bolting on more features and more options into the back end of Ads Manager. So get off that boost button, get into Ads Manager. But yes, boosting posts really is what I call the gateway drug of getting into doing Facebook ads.